The town of Hollow Creek was quiet, too quiet. It was the kind of quiet that made you feel like you were being watched even when you were alone. The silence was almost tangible, wrapping around you like a cold, damp blanket. The houses stood like watchful eyes, their facades crumbling and paint peeling, as if they had witnessed too many secrets and could no longer bear the weight of them. Their windows dark and empty, like soulless eyes staring into the void. It was as if the very essence of life had been sucked out of them, leaving behind only hollow shells. A stillness hung in the air, thick and heavy, suffocating the few sounds that dared to break the silence. The fog rolled in, dense and unyielding, cloaking the town in an eerie, almost supernatural stillness. Dead leaves crunched under unseen feet, the sound echoing through the empty streets like a ghostly reminder of the life that once thrived here. The wind whispered through the trees, carrying with it the scent of decay and distant fear. It was a whisper that seemed to speak of forgotten tales and lost souls. The mist rolled through the decaying woods, weaving through the trees like a spectral presence, adding to the sense of unease that permeated the air. The town held a secret, a darkness that clung to its heart like a shroud. It was a secret that seemed to seep into the very ground, tainting everything it touched. It whispered in the rustle of leaves, a sound that seemed to carry the weight of countless untold stories. In the creak of old houses, the groan of wood and the sigh of ancient walls seemed to speak of a time long past. In the very air itself a sense of foreboding lingered, as if the town itself was alive and aware of its own dark history. It was a secret that sent shivers down your spine, a feeling that something was always watching, always waiting. It made you afraid to turn off the lights at night, for fear that the darkness would reveal the town's hidden horrors, a secret that Cassie knew all too well. She had grown up in Hollow Creek, and the town's whispers had been a part of her life for as long as she could remember. The stories her grandmother told her, the warnings to never wander alone at night, the strange occurrences that no one could explain, all of it had shaped her childhood and left an indelible mark on her soul. Cassie remembered sitting by the fireplace, her grandmother's voice low and hushed as she recounted the tales of the town's dark past. Stories of disappearances, of shadows that moved on their own, of voices that called out in the dead of night. Now, as an adult, Cassie found herself drawn back to Hollow Creek, unable to escape the pull of the town's mysteries. She walked the foggy streets, the weight of the past heavy on her shoulders, the whispers of the town ever-present in her mind. She knew she had to uncover the truth, to face the darkness that had haunted her for so long. The town of Hollow Creek held its breath, waiting for the secrets to be revealed, for the whispers to finally be heard. As Cassie stepped into the old house, the door creaking open with a sound that echoed through the empty halls, she felt a chill run down her spine. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and the darkness seemed to close in around her. With each step, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. They seemed to be guiding her, leading her deeper into the heart of the house, into the heart of the town's secrets. In a forgotten corner of the house, Cassie found an old, dusty journal. Her hands trembled as she opened it, the pages yellowed with age, the words within revealing the truth of Hollow Creek's dark past. As she read, the whispers seemed to grow louder, the air around her growing colder. The secrets of Hollow Creek were finally being unveiled, and Cassie knew that her life would never be the same again. With a newfound resolve, Cassie closed the journal. She knew that the town's whispers would never truly be silenced, but she was determined to face them, to uncover the truth and bring light to the darkness that had shrouded Hollow Creek for so long. Cassie shivered, pulling her jacket tighter around her. Even in the warmth of her room she couldn't shake the chill that had settled deep in her bones. It had been a year, but the memories of that night still haunted her dreams, sharp and vivid as broken glass. The masked face twisted in a grotesque parody of a smile, the glint of the blade in the moonlight, the blood-curdling scream that echoed through the night, forever seared into her memory. She closed her eyes trying to shut out the images, but they only grew stronger in the darkness. You sure about this, Cass? Emily's voice was barely a whisper, her eyes darting nervously around the abandoned quarry. The place had always given her the creeps, but tonight, it felt different. The air was thick with an unspoken tension, a sense of foreboding that seemed to seep into her very bones. The setting sun cast long eerie shadows that danced and twisted like phantoms in the fading light. Each shadow seemed to have a life of its own, moving with a sinister grace that made the hairs on the back of her neck stand up. It was as if the quarry itself was alive, watching them, waiting. It'll be fine, Cassie said, trying to sound more confident than she felt. She had always been the brave one, the leader of their little group. But tonight, even she couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. Her voice, usually so steady and reassuring, wavered slightly, betraying her inner turmoil. But the tremor in her voice betrayed her fear. 
She glanced at her friends, hoping to draw strength from their presence, but all she saw was the same fear reflected in their eyes. They were all on edge, their nerves frayed by the oppressive atmosphere of the quarry. The air was thick with the smell of damp earth and something else, something metallic and sharp that made her stomach churn. It was a smell that brought back memories of that fateful night a year ago, memories she had tried so hard to forget. The metallic tang in the air was a cruel reminder of the blood that had been spilled, the lives that had been changed forever. They were back at the quarry, the place where it had all begun. The place that had once been their sanctuary, their secret hideaway, now felt like a prison. The walls of the quarry seemed to close in around them, trapping them in a nightmare they couldn't escape. A year ago they had laughed and joked, oblivious to the darkness lurking in the shadows. They had been so carefree, so full of life. The quarry had been their playground, a place where they could escape the pressures of the outside world. But that all changed on that fateful night, the night when everything went wrong. Now every rustle of leaves, every creak of metal sent shivers down their spines. The once familiar sounds of the quarry had taken on a sinister tone, each noise a reminder of the horrors they had witnessed. They were no longer the carefree teenagers they had once been. The events of that night had changed them, marked them in ways they were only beginning to understand. As they stood there, surrounded by the gathering shadows, they couldn't help but wonder if they would ever truly be free of the darkness that haunted them. The first text message arrived as they were about to leave, a single sentence, stark and terrifying. I see you. Cassie's blood ran cold. She glanced around but the quarry was deserted, the shadows growing longer and deeper as the last rays of sunlight faded away. Another message, don't turn around. Her heart pounded in her chest, a frantic drumbeat against her ribs. They were being watched, hunted. The air crackled with fear, palpable and suffocating. The quarry, once a place of childhood adventures, was now a hunting ground. Section 5. The Quarry's Secret A figure emerged from the shadows, tall and imposing, its features obscured by a grotesque mask. The mask, a crude mockery of a human face, seemed to leer at them, its painted smile a gash of crimson against the white. Cassie's breath caught in her throat. It was him, the masked stalker, the figure who had terrorized their town a year ago, leaving a trail of whispers and fear in his wake. The figure from her nightmares, now made flesh and blood. Section 6. The Mask of Terror The figure moved with a chilling grace gliding toward them, its eyes glinting through the slits of the mask. It was as if the darkness itself had come alive, taking form in this masked terror. The air grew colder with each step it took, a palpable sense of dread filling the space around them. A cold dread washed over Cassie, paralyzing her with fear. This was not a game. Her heart pounded in her chest, each beat echoing the terror that gripped her. She could feel the icy fingers of fear wrapping around her, squeezing tighter with every passing second. Her mind raced, trying to comprehend the reality of the situation, but it was too overwhelming. This was real. Run! Mike's voice, hoarse with terror, broke the spell. His shout was a lifeline, snapping Cassie out of her frozen state. The urgency in his voice was unmistakable, a desperate plea for survival. She turned to see the raw fear etched on his face, mirroring her own. They scattered, their footsteps echoing in the stillness of the quarry as they ran blindly, desperately seeking escape. The once familiar paths now seemed alien, twisted by the shadows that danced in the moonlight. Every corner they turned, every step they took, was filled with the fear of the unknown. The quarry, a place they had explored countless times, had transformed into a nightmarish maze. The quarry, once familiar, was now a labyrinth of shadows and fear. The towering rock walls seemed to close in on them, the darkness pressing down like a suffocating blanket. Every sound was amplified, the rustle of leaves, the crunch of gravel all blending into a symphony of terror. They could feel the presence of the masked figure, always just a step behind, a relentless predator in the night. Branches clawed at them, rocks tripped their feet, but still they ran, the sound of their pursuers' heavy footsteps close behind. The forest was a gauntlet of obstacles, each one a potential trap. The branches seemed to reach out with malicious intent, the rocks eager to send them sprawling. But the fear drove them on, a primal instinct to survive. They could hear the labored breathing of the masked figure, feel the ground tremble with each of its steps. The chase was relentless, a harrowing test of endurance and will. Every second felt like an eternity, every breath a struggle. The night was alive with their fear, a living, breathing entity that fed on their terror. And through it all, the masked figure remained a constant, an unyielding force of nature that would not be denied. Section 7, Run For Your Life Cassie's lungs burned, her legs screaming for respite, but she didn't dare slow down. The masked figure was gaining on them, its heavy breathing echoing ominously behind them. The air was thick with the metallic scent she had smelled earlier. Blood. She stumbled, falling hard on the rough ground. 
pain shot through her ankle, but she scrambled to her feet, her eyes frantically searching for her friends. They were scattered now, their cries lost in the wind. Section 8. Trapped in the Darkness She was alone. The quarry walls seemed to close in on her, the darkness pressing down like a suffocating blanket. Panic welled up inside her, threatening to consume her. She ducked behind a cluster of boulders, her heart pounding against her ribs. She could hear him close by, his heavy breathing ragged in the stillness. He was toying with them, hurting them like sheep, savoring their fear. Section 9. A Glimmer of Hope A faint light flickered in the distance, a beacon of hope in the suffocating darkness. The old watchman's cabin. If she could just reach it, maybe she could call for help. She took a deep breath, stealing herself. It was a gamble, but it was her only chance. She broke from her hiding place, her legs pumping furiously as she ran towards the light, the sound of her own fear echoing in her ears. Section 10. No Escape. The cabin door was ajar, the faint light spilling out into the darkness. She stumbled inside, slamming the door shut behind her and fumbling for the lock. But it was too late. The sound of heavy breathing, close now, sent a fresh wave of terror through her. She spun around, her eyes wide with fear. Section 11. The Nightmares Continue. He was standing in the doorway, his grotesque mask illuminated by the flickering light. He took a step towards her, his hand reaching out and Cassie screamed. The scream died in her throat, choked off by terror. His eyes, cold and lifeless, stared into hers and for the first time, Cassie understood the true meaning of fear. The mask was no longer a mask, it was the face of her nightmare.